Hello and welcome to today's show. Today I'm going to show you a technique for doing fine work on vinyl mask electro etching of aluminum in particular. Before we get started, we have to have our required disclaimer that the purpose of this video is entertainment. It is not intended to instruct. There is no warranty either written or implied and none shall be inferred. Step one will always be to practice. And you need practice. I think I've shown these in previous videos, little pieces of aluminum. You can buy them scrap if you don't have them in the house or the barn or the garage or whatever. I would suggest that you practice on something like this before you go into doing something that is uh, basically is irreversible as far as I know. And when we do this, you get one shot to get it right and you better be happy with it. Uh, so if you're going to etch, etch deep enough. When you pull it, it's over. If it is too deep, you might lose a little detail. In fact, uh, there's some tips as far as that goes. I'm going to bring my some little paper right here so I don't mark up my, my table. And I'm going to put me a little piece of paper here. Now I've got my little pad here, my little paper. I'm going to show you something that I have observed. Now, if I take my little black magic marker and I'm going to go over to this corner over here and I'm going to draw me kind of a flattened figure eight. We often have our little holes like this. And this is what it looks like when we are uh, just starting our cut for very fine work. One of the things I've found is to fill in uh, the holes if they don't stay in place. The first thing to help them stay in place is when I mask off a, a piece, I've got it set out to go. I go ahead and put my transfer tape on there, put it on my clean piece that I'm going to etch. Because I find that the adhesive on the back of the Oracle 751 is stronger than the attachment it has to the release liner, which makes sense because the release liner's got to give it up. I've tried back picking. That's where you actually stick it on your transfer tape, turn it over, peel it off, and then pull your bits off. I find what works best for really fine work is to go ahead and transfer it directly unpicked to the work. Get it set where you want to and get her down. Now, sometimes, and I'm going to go back to my little picture, we end up, as we cut, we end up with our little circle on top. And in my case, a friend of mine is doing my cutting for me, so by the time he cuts it, brings it into work the next day, I take it home, and then a couple days later I go to use it. My glue is already too uh, weak on the other side where it's been exposed air, it won't stick. So that is a problem on the very small one. Okay, one of the things that you're, I'm sure you're going to be aware of is we want to to pick nice rounded shapes because they work. One of the things he does is he has, I think, um, three thousandths uh, over travel, and I think he has a three thousandth, if I understood him correctly, in his offset. And what that'll do is when you cut, you can either cut on the line, you can cut inside of the line like that, or you might cut outside the line. If you have a very fat object, you might actually do well to cut inside the line, just make it a little bit thinner. If you have a very thin font, you may actually make it a little bit wider just by offsetting a few thousands to the other side of the line. That's what that does. It just drives the cut center, left, right, on the inside or outside cuts. I find that when I use the the bolded fonts, what I observe is my little dots here are awfully darn small. Now, 
In the previous video, you saw some 12-point, I think it was aerial fonts, what he used. And what he had done is I drew it out based upon the size and everything I needed. He came back in and overlaid his text in using the program, the actual cutter's program, rather than my raster. And that made it a little bit better. And then he could delete my layer off and we're good to go. Now, that works fairly well. Now, what it does do is it gives him the ability to control it and look at it, and it keeps my general proportionality. And when I do this, my small or my fines, sometimes I end up losing those dots. So one of the things that I discovered is, using my technique of putting the piece down and then picking it, when I had a lost hole, I discovered I could just go ahead and use my... Um, fingernail polish technique. Now this little pie here that I cut on a test piece was actually painted on. This was actually a piece of, of uh, electrical tape we've seen, but I discovered if I paint it on, I can fill those holes, let it dry, come back and pick it, and my little red holes will stay in their place. And that worked pretty well. In fact, here is a piece that was cut and done that way. I lost the dots of my 458 SOCOM. I am restricted to the size it needs to be to fit where it needs to fit. So I'm kind of uh, between a rock and a hard place there, but it turned out fairly well. Now, on my second attempt where I was doing the typical maker text, and my model and serial number, that thing, as I put them in there, I had the same situation. I had some dots that wouldn't stay. Now this is 10 point and 11 point area, which is pretty darn small. It is as small as I can practically pick with a tool such as this. Now, here's the thing. For that purpose, we're going to naturally widen out as we etch. And so one might think, well, let me keep my lines as close enough together as I can possibly go and then it'll be better. Yes, to a degree, and no to another degree, because here's the problem you run into. The thinner you get, the harder it is to take that little picking, get it to come on up. It will widen out, and you need to be aware of that as you go deep. Now, let me show you, go back to the overhead, and we'll look at this again. Okay, now assume that this is my surface of my metal, and I'm going to have the, the, the meat below me. And so I come up here, and I'm going to put my mask on top of my metal as you see right here what i have discovered is and i'm going to use orange okay as i start etching and this is a current related issue you can you can adjust your salt level down in your in your brine your salt water i use one third cup common salt to one cup white vinegar typical white five percent vinegar whatever it is and it works very well it cuts very quickly now there is a downside to it. As we cut, and I'm going to say we've got our pad above it, we're pulling our electricity up this way, and that helps, that's what's etching it away. And a little bit of an etch, and I'm going to show you, we start out etching here and here, but as we go, because we conduct electricity in our fluid, in our brine, when we move over to the side and say we're over here on this part is where I have my probe end, my etching tool. I'm pulling current this way, which helps to slowly and it will actually begin to widen out underneath your etching material. So your mass begins to uh, develop a wider path. And you end up with something. This isn't exaggerated, of course, but what happens is it begins to begins to eat out, and you end up with the layers, the very edges, right here and right here, begin to lift. And they're lifting not because the adhesive failed, but because there's no metal up underneath them for them to stick to. And I notice that you end up getting something begins to widen out. I'm going to put my deer head, a little picture of the deer head as I cut it, and you will actually be able to see the edges of the mass begin to look like it's coming unstuck. Again, it's not coming unstuck. The Oracle 751 is a very thin material. It doesn't 
conduct electricity. It works very well for this, but as you undercut the erode, you're eroding underneath it, it gets wider. And that will have an effect on what you see. Now, I'm going to zoom in here, take a piece of this stainless cup, Now, let me get my little, my little probe here. Now this is stainless, it's on the cup, and it's one of the pieces I tried before I cut a lower. And you see one of the things that I ended up doing is I widened up, I enlarged the graphic as large as it would go, what large as it would fit on the lower. And as I went through, I don't know if the light is gonna show it, there's an eyeball. Okay, I had an eyeball on this side. As I went through a couple of etching, clean out the fluid, rinse off, etching, clean out the fluid. My eyeball here was staying until my last little wash and it wasn't there, so it's a little dull, but it's still raised up. But what I ended up having to do to make this work is I had to widen some of my features. Now this is actually the deer that is on the wall. I took a photograph, converted it to three bit, then went back and manually started taking some of the dots and spots out to make an entire area open like this. And then from there, after trying to cut it fairly unsuccessfully, I had to come back in and accentuate some of these areas like this. And this actually is narrower than what it was on the mask because it kind of erodes up underneath it. Not so much with the stainless. It also takes a little bit more effort to uh, get that cut in that location to get it to actually edge down deep enough in stainless versus aluminum. Now the function of the current obviously the higher the current that you pull when you electro edge is going to be directly proportional to the speed at which it actually cuts. But it also, as re I'm returning back to my little diagram here, it actually affects when we pull off to the side. If you will look at the original video, or the, should I say the last video, what you will see when we're doing the shield, and I start at the bottom of the shield, you'll actually see blackness and bubbles starting from further into the graphics, not directly below, where I'm pulling. Be aware of that if you're drawing high current. You can also decrease your salt content as I mentioned. You can also decrease the current, put it on a little bit lower so you're pulling more up and a little less sideways. Because what you're going to end up with as a summary, as we do this, we end up with lifting this little edge so it's going to be a little bit wider than it is cut. And you, if you could cut it really super thin and small, that would be great. But you still got to pick it with a tool. And so there's a practical limit to it. Now I'm going to show some uh, still picture of some NFA text. Now to me this looks a little bit on the crookedish side, but it could be an optical illusion given by the, the trigger pin, the trigger and hammer pin there. But I tried to line it across the top, line it across the bottom, and it took me two shots with the bottom piece before I found one of the uh, masks that would line up to it. So it may actually be a little bit crooked, but it's good enough for government work as they say. And we're going to go from there. I had my dots right here, my little eight dots disappear and I did the same thing. I went back over it and took my non-conductive fingernail polish and I painted over my holes. This, this is the second time I've tried that and I let it sit and dry real well, kind of taped off or took a little q-tip, cleaned off the top of the mask so I had it down in the divots a little bit. And I waited, I did it a second time, so I had a good thickness of that non-conductive um, acrylic there. And it worked out pretty well, because what I've got here is, is a very functionally deep etch, good enough that it's below my 3,000th requirement, and it's also thick enough that I can take, a, take the blasting when it goes to Cerakote, where it's at right now, and it stood up very well all by using the technique of laying my mass down unpicked directly to my substrate, my metal, rubbing it down nice and smooth, 
then coming back and in my damaged area, my missing areas, my lacking a P or T or, or you know, P, C, any of those. I see what else would I have? An O, a P, any of those that were like they were going to be a little bit slipping out of place or coming off or didn't want to stay in the right place where I want to put them. You can fingernail polish over. When it dries, come back and pick your eight, pick your O, pick whatever it is out of the way and go from there. Now I pool etch. I don't know what this is called, anything more than what I just called it. I pool etch. I actually put it down and put hot melt glue around the edge. You've seen that in the previous video. Here's a picture of back to the deer head and you can see a little bit of that rolling up. Etch until it felt deep enough. Take the old pick in there and feel the spot. How deep does it feel? Take it off, it's all you can do. Clean her up and let her go. Okay getting ready to uh, try burning my little trademark deer in there. I've got my little uh, glue well in place. Uh, there's my anode tied to the aluminum. The cathode of course is the etcher and you've seen that tool. It's all gauzed up getting ready to go and I sure hope this works. Okay, that is the first time through. Uh, I got to get my little pick and check it, but it looks like we're a little shy down here in the in the bottom of the shoulder and uh, the brisket area. And then it looks like we're doing pretty well up top. Nothing has moved yet. I was concerned about the eye area and the little eyebrow. Let's see what she does though. So. Okay, I hope that this will be good enough. You see, I kind of rinsed it off. See the depth before I peel the stuff off. The eyes stayed in place. The brows, the cheeks, whatever the ear highlights. So we're going to peel it off. Whatever it is, it's done now. So I hope it didn't um, come on, focus yourself on. Huh? I hope it didn't booger up the lower so that ought to be about all I can say on something as simple as this but actually has a few little tricky spots to it because vinyl etching can only go so fine it's not a laser but you'd be surprised if you'll go ahead and do what I suggest what I do mine I lay it down paint my missing spots pull up the rest of the pickings there let that set build my dam etch it from there it seems to work pretty well I hope this is helpful to you if you have something you want to do and I wish you great success in it. But I will strongly suggest you practice a little bit on something that you don't care about first until you're confident enough that, you know, any little bit of errors one way or the other, not going to bother you. So thank you for watching today's show. Come back and see us.